Okay, so good morning and welcome today for a continuation of yesterday's session and we'll also do NLP. Okay, so let's start. Till now, the last 15 minutes, we have been discussing about the next three days that are coming and what we'll be doing. So I am most probably, it's not been 100% confirmed. I'm inviting uh, Mrs. Shilpa Gaurav Gupta and Mrs. Tasneem Bhopal Bala, Bhopal Bala. These two are very senior and very young and you know absolutely full of life faculty. And they'll be talking to you about certain aspects of personality development. So I hope you enjoy them tomorrow, or if not tomorrow, then definitely day after, or at least one of them is has already confirmed. So Tasneem is already confirmed. It's just that Shilpa needs to, you know, get her uh, having so many family members and having so many other responsibilities. She needs to be able to take out both hours in the one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening, and even kind of synchronize with the same um, and take it forward. So today we're going to be completing what we started yesterday and we kind of were about to talk about Johari window. So any clarifications, any questions for yesterday? A quick no ma'am will also do and uh, looking forward to what is today and we will begin in just another few seconds. So anyone, any questions about yesterday? So yesterday we talked about not only the formal and informal modes of communication, but we also talked about some of the nuances of how communication, it may seem as if it's very simple, but it isn't. There can be noise at any level. There are so many barriers and there are so many restrictions and there are so many times we are so, so distracted. Okay. And we've already covered time management. We've already covered so many topics which has helped us in managing our personality. And today, we are going to be continuing with TA. So in TA, we also talked about the parent, adult, and child ego state. We also talked about the time options. That is, you may have what is called um, foresight, mid-site and hindsight. And then we also talked about scripts, which are constructive, destructive, and stagnant. We also talked about accidents, patterns, and coincidences, okay? So there are so many things. We also spoke about how men and women are so different from each other. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and every aspect of um, communication is somewhere where you need to be able to develop trust in people and be able to realize that it may seem as if just talking, as if just observing is enough. And the entire life, the crux of your beingness and your entire life depends upon the way you communicate. And we also talked about the fact that listening is so important. The word listen has the word silent. It also has the word enlist in it, okay? So when you listen carefully, you can only do so when the chatter in your own mind is, you know, not there. And the types of listening were such that you, you know, kind of avoided ambushing, you avoided selective listening, you avoided pseudo listening, you looked at what is called active listening. And I also said that it was also called prayerful listening. So with all these, we also followed quite a few rules in which how you listen to people and how you paraphrase, how you make other people feel comfortable and good around you. And there are so many modes. And apart from parent, child, and adult ego states, the cross transactions and the parallel transactions, we also talked about strokes. We also talked about life positions. In life position, you start with, I'm not okay, you're okay. Then we go to the second position, which says, I am not okay, but neither are you. And then it comes to a stage where the child develops and says, I'm pretty okay with myself, but you are not okay. But the ultimate stage where the child should establish themselves and grow up with that feeling 
and with that value is that yes i am definitely okay and you are also wonderful and not just okay but great and we are all here to synergize and take life forward okay and we also talked about and now we are going, we talked about time structuring and that's where i'm going to be starting okay so okay so we talked about withdrawal we talked about rituals and we talked about pastime but we did not talk so much about the games people play so withdrawal is again you know people who have developed a sense of you know i'm not okay probably you are okay or i'm not okay you are also not okay or even if i'm okay you are okay i still prefer to be with myself okay so these are the people who withdraw themselves from the situation they are socially introverted and they are probably even according to carl gustav jung pretty introverted where they are very happy with their own company okay and i also told you that there are times when people are unable to face what is happening outside there's a little raise of voice there's a little change in the tone and they just you know feel so scared so they are probably having some trust issues and that is also what we spoke about yesterday in order to be a good communicator you need to be able to develop trust within yourself also to be a good communicator and trust in the eyes of the people you are with empathy is something that is coming again and again in our topics in emotional intelligence in uh, team building also it will be coming and it has always been there and then it has been there in so many other topics even in motivation i think we talked about empathy and again we talking about empathy okay so empathy is there everywhere and then in in stress management also empathy came where in able to manage other other people stress and your own stress please sometimes people who are ambushing you people who are irritating you people who are actually you know making you uh, go towards things you are not comfortable about your personality you just understand which space they are coming from and then it will become very easy for you to use a hope on a pono technique of forgiveness where you say i feel sorry for you i forgive you i thank you and i love you for whatever it is and just using these four statements faking them okay sometimes just simply faking them also works okay when you make these happen after faking them sometimes even once you say that genuinely it just works and that is where even rituals comes in where you go through certain rituals over a period of time in the entire year starting with new years eve celebration it's a ritual also why do you do that so that you welcome the new year with enthusiasm with friends with people whom you love and with a lot of fun dancing joy and the whole works and you, if you can't do it yourself you hire other people dj's and uh, you know many others to put on some favorite music of yours so that that is taken care of and they also enjoy it because that's when they are able to make a lot of money of their own and they go back tired to their families but then they have a good time so marriages happen then there are some festivities that happen so rituals and even coming together and having a cup of tea in the morning many couples when rujukta devake came up with the fact that don't have tea in the morning whether it's green tea or any tea any tea in the morning is bad there were many couples who told her we are not interested in talking to you we are not interested in listening to your philosophy because what we are following for so many years we are not going to change it and then comes this past time thing that is gossiping watching tv we already done it that it is part of the fourth quadrangle which is not important which is not urgent and yet in our life we should have time for the golf balls we should have time for the big tomatoes in our life which is the second quadrangle that is something which is very important but it just because it is not urgent okay but just because it is not urgent we just don't look at it but that is what what you are 
you know entire life should be so past time also you should have enough time and yet please do not be like some people who have just done past time okay they've literally passed their time in their life and they've really not helped anyone and they've been those privileged people but if you still want to be that way well what can i say now let's come to this thing that is called games people play games people play was a book that really made eric eric, uh, eric burn very very popular okay so eric burn and this entire ta concept became popular when people read this book of his i have two copies of it and uh, right now i don't even have one here because i kept it aside because these are you know transactions with hidden motives okay and can you just read that which perpetuate a self defeating lifestyle okay these are people who are not willing to take responsibility for what they want they are the people you know who will there are so many such games a few of them is like you know let you and him fight just i mean on a daily basis i keep coming across people and every time sometimes when i have to teach you all something it's as if one day before that something like that happens and then i i'm so uh, enthusiastic about giving you the uh, the example so yesterday it happened that uh, i spoke to uh, a gentleman about something and uh, again a youngster calling me mata ji and all that from ayodhya and all that so one of these uh, sweetheart type of people who are who is like um, who came in came in with some problems but because they are completely hindi speaking background and they are new to pune and i also you know tell them that okay if i am from alabad i am from up so you are most welcome so like that i have a a team of people around me from up who keep coming and talking to me and keep uh, um, you know sometimes they offer something to me and sometimes uh, they land up taking away some things to me <laughs> some money from you so this gentleman called up and we had a nice chat we talked about meditation we talked about you know the importance of mother we talked about mother as a stereotype and we talked about uh, father stereotype we talked about bosses we talked about um, having an ashram we talked about so many things and it was a very nice conversation the moment this gentleman left uh, kept the phone his friend called up okay again the same conversation and i was like you know i got to prepare my lecture please leave so they were still kind of you know chatting and all that and then suddenly the second fellow started telling me about the problems that he's having with another friend of his who was been with him as a colleague and working in his work, work with him since more than 10 years and i have known these people for more than 7 to 8 years and i somehow feel that that particular person he, whom this one was talking about was actually a very was a person who even has a calming effect on me and they've always been there and you know sweet fellows on the scooters scuttering around you know helping ma'am and madam ji aapke liye hum kya kar le madam ji aapke liye kya kar le and they struggle with english and they really want to learn english they want to learn all these soft skills and take it forward and they have so much to share their own knowledge so that's how things have been happening so this fellow had some problem with his friend's uh, brother and yesterday he started you know telling me that hum bahut gussa mein hai hum usko maar denge kaat denge aur jo hai na wo bridge se phek denge i got so angry i warned him a few days ago also he told me the same thing i said i'm you know i'm not going to be into it and then there was a third fourth fifth friend who called up and he said ki bhai aap bahut pareshan hai humko lag raha hai unhone bola tha aisa aisa hua and then started you know putting a little chabi so that i have more fights and then i realized i said oh my god games people play look at it and i told i called their bluff okay and they were i was watching that how they were getting into that victim hood you know are humko aise aapko nahi pata humko kitni takleef hui hai hum kitna struggle kiye hain and all that i said fine but don't get into these triangles and 
there are two such videos here right now which talks about these triangles okay one of them is very beautiful and it's right here and i'll look for them and i'll put it on the thing but today i'll just show you one which is called the the first one that is where you know the games thing is there then there's another game that people play is a yes but okay this happens with counselors but not trained counselors people who are trained for counseling they will not go through this because they've been trained about handling this yes but you know situation this happens amongst two friends where the girlfriends or guy friends and you one of them is the yes but type okay will come to a friend or will come to a a person who is just a a novice uh, coachy you know i'm a coach i'm i've learned from so and so and i'm you know i'm a coach i'm certified as a coach and then they will say that you know being a coach is so easy it's so much fun all you have to do is just give advice and that is not what counseling and coaching is all about and yet that is what they feel it is and they succeed and then they come across this person who comes to them and these people start giving advice so the first advice comes and they say yes but you know it cannot be done then another one comes yes but you know it cannot be done so i'll give an example about two friends they've just recently got married both of them one of them is having a very high a nice happy honeymoony type of a lifestyle and very busy very you know full of work full of joy and you know a lot of enthusiasm getting along with the husband getting along very well with the in-laws and the whole works is fine the other one is pup is perpetually unhappy not having a good relationship with in-laws not even staying with them if they are coming over she is having issues she has problems with her own parents and then this thing starts you know that i want to talk to you i want to get it out of my chest and then that yes but syndrome starts okay so the first one says why don't you go out you know for dinner with your husband and go for a candlelight dinner yes but you know how expensive these candlelight dinners are once you go there per person it costs about you know 15 to uh, 100 to 2000 you know we don't have that kind of money okay okay fine then go to somewhere which is a little cheaper why don't you go to a shetty joint because at the end of the day both of you are vegetarian yes but it's so noisy out there you know it's no fun okay then you know do it at home yes but you know how it is my kitchen is very new and i don't if i'm going to cook then where is it you know then my husband wants everything you know he wants it all hot he wants hot chapatis so if i have to cook dinner for him where is the candle light and everything and he'll say fan ko on karo so how will i you know put the candle light on and okay fine get someone else to come in but then if i if i get someone else to come in and cook then i'll have to pay that person then what's the point okay might as well have gone out okay then go out but then i told you na it is so irritating and so noisy out there okay so okay, okay fine don't go for dinner go out for a long drive yeah i could but the thing is like look at the petrol prices yeah and then you know my husband feels that it's going to be a waste of money and then you know what he wants to go out to this pub and i don't like pub okay people smoke over there okay then don't go out to a pub go to this place called prems he'll get what he wants and you'll get what you want yes but again you're not understanding it is all open outside and there are trees over there and at night anything you know something will fall it start crawling and if i fall sick and all that you know in the corona days how will i be able to go to the doctors and you know how allergic i am to all these things but then what do you want to do i am just i am here to seek your advice you tell me what i should do and you are asking me what i should do okay she said but then what can i say whatever i am telling you you don't want to do it. what do you mean by you are telling me whatever you are telling me is all impractical you are having a nice time and you are not wanting to help me okay so now what happens is that with this yes but games this whole role reversal happens and then this the friend who was like enthusiastic happy in her life starts getting irritated with this friend who is refusing to be happy are you getting it anyone can you just type a yes as to what this whole thing is 
and can you understand how these games happen and how people play these games can i get some response good 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 yes good good so now let's just watch this short video understand how conflict arises between people often in dramatic or intense relationships or interactions and it was conceived by Stephen Carman in 1968 and it involves three different roles um one that's kind of called a one down role and two that are called one up roles these three roles are the victim the rescuer and the persecutor and i think understanding how these roles work can really help us to identify how we could be resolving potentially destructive interactions that are quite draining on our energy so let's start with the victim role and i think the victim role is quite self explanatory it's the person who feels helpless and powerless like they can never cut a break or they can never get ahead in life they often think things like you know this always happens to me another role in the drama triangle is the rescuer and this person um is someone who takes responsibility for other people's problems and they kind of make it their own problem but at the same time they don't really look at their own life um, which could impact their complete mess and they'll see people who might be going through a difficult time and think oh look at that person you know um they need help I'm nice so I'll help them or maybe something a bit more parental like if that person did what I said they'd be happy and i think the dynamic that we often see play out between the victim and the rescuer is something that we see in movies and you know romantic comedies all the time it's something that we almost think is normal but it really is an unhealthy interaction so the third role in this triangle is a persecutor this is a person who is frustrated they kind of self righteous and a bit of a bully um you know and they might think things like you know they're wrong and I'm right and they need to do what I say or that person will get what's coming to them another thing that's really important to recognize about this triangle is that each of these roles move between each other So you know the rescuer can become the persecutor or the persecutor can become the victim um or the victim can become the persecutor so they all kind of move around another concept that's really important to understand when talking about the drama triangle is this idea of the starting gate we tend to have this one role that we most naturally sort of enter into so for instance you know one person might often go straight to the victim role where someone else might jump into the rescuer role the other thing that's really interesting about this is that our starting gate role sort of is part of what we see as our own identity Uh, and like I said before, we shift from one role to the other. Um, inevitably, we all end up in the victim role, feeling powerless and helpless and unable to do anything. And that's what I guess that brings me to the next question: How do we get out of this drama triangle? So let's take it by looking at each role again. So in the one down victim role, um, we need to become a survivor. In order to do this, um, we need to think like a problem solver and ask ourselves questions like, "What do I want? And what steps can I take to get what I want?" Another useful thing to do is to reflect on good things that are going our way. So we can make a note of it in a calendar or a diary. Uh you know, ask ourselves questions like what are three things that I'm grateful for today? Or at the end of each week we could ask ourselves what did I achieve this week? So let's move on to the rescuer role again. If this is where you tend to find yourself sitting, you need to think of yourself as a teacher or a coach rather than as a rescuer. You need to remember the golden rule about teaching the mentor fish. So you need to support and encourage the person who's trying to identify and solve their problems rather than rushing and solving for them. You can ask something like what is it that you want to see happen in the situation or what do you think you can do to change this? Also, you need to make sure that you set boundaries. Setting boundaries around the time that you're listening to the person and letting them know that is really important. In some ways, it's a similar situation with a starting gate persecutor who like a rescuer puts themselves in this sort of one up power powerful position. The difference is with this role is that you need to become a challenger. You need to be firm but fair in your approach to people. And you, to help the person recognize how you're feeling, you need to sort of address the consequences of their actions and set boundaries. So for instance, you could say something like if you if you keep your side of the agreement, I can keep mine. As with the rescuer, it's important to remember um to set these boundaries and recognize that this is a real problem to solve. By freeing ourselves from strong triangle, we're able to have happier healthy relationships with people. We won't feel so drained and powerless. And we'll also be able to identify toxic relationships that we may in fact be better off without. I just love this video. This Did you like it? I really loved it when I saw it. It explained it so well. The first three aspects were explained very well, but the second half of this video and I just put it on high speed for you all, but I'm going to send this link you look for it again on YouTube. I've downloaded it because there are times when I try to put uh, YouTube while things are happening it doesn't work. So I've got a way to download the YouTube videos and then I take it further. So the other one is also relatively good but I'm going to send you the link to both of these and you please have a look at it. The most important thing that you got to realize that in order to come out of all this is when you come from a space of pure unconditional love. When you start loving a person and here I mean it literally scientifically when you love a person for what they are you know or you just fall in love or you rise in love 
this whole concept of even falling in love means that you are willing to do anything for that person you are willing to go to any lengths but when you rise in love is means again you are willing to do anything good for this person nothing you know i mean just enjoy this whole i have fallen in love and i am you know there are so many songs on love falling in love with you falling in love with you why couldn't i why shouldn't i fall in love with you please forgive me i can't stop loving you please forgive me <laughs> okay so this whole concept of loving anyone anyone any relationship i'm not just talking about people from the opposite gender your friends your colleagues your teachers your seniors your boss your you know the celebrities mini celebrities tv celebrities these um, concepts even pets you may be in love with some objects so what happens is that when you really actually are in love you accept it as it is and you don't feel like changing it changing it and getting over it is something you hold on to it even if it breaks you hold on to it even you know a relationship which has become very toxic you still hold on to it okay you start playing games with these people in order to hold on to that person you want to rescue this person you want to you know be a persecutor how dare you do this to me and then you want to be a victim please don't go away you know all that after all that ultimately what will happen what will work for you is the last two things and out of these two things the first thing that is important is get busy with some commercially oriented work get busy with anything that makes you professional that earns you some money if you are good with chapati making become a professional make such good chapatis and ask around and start selling them start whatever it is i seen in corona there were families who actually you know took a scooter and they took had some baskets around they had some packets around and they were selling vegetables there was a there was a person who just literally i i saw it people doing it on their scooter people doing it out of their car people doing it out of their van people doing it out of their cycle and there was a gentleman who was make, who was actually providing samosas to these shops like to pushkar and all that he actually just brought he used to make the samosas every day and he used to go from society to society and he used to stand outside these kirana walas or he used to stand near these places where there was a medical shop and all that so people will come to medical shops they will go to sabzi walas and kirana walas and even the sabzi walas the kirana walas themselves used to feel bad for this fellow and they used to pick up two three two three and then the customers they would tell the customers is very nice i once picked up the whole bag i paid i don't know how many 1000 something 500 or something to him and i picked it up and i went door to door you know ting tong with mask and with everything and in separate packets i said and i had you know separate packets and plates and all that and i told them i said if you like to have samosas these are very nice okay they are in this packet and you can bring your plate and i've got gloves and everything and i'll just give it to you and this is how we continue people started calling me up romita i like more for samosas i am not doing it every day so i did it once i did it twice but then that's how it is get busy with work pick up anything anything you're passionate about anything you do when you do it ask yourself will someone pay me for this job you're doing jhadu pocha do it so thoroughly will someone pay me for it and have the courage to ask for it go out there make yourself useful get busy do something do anything i have had people coming to me and saying you know i am not if i lost my job and everything i said then fine do something okay what do you mean by i said nowadays ubers and uh, 
Ola's like about four years, five years ago, they had just come in. And I'd asked around. And I'm one of those and on you know enterprising people and my driver also and the others, you know, at that time. Right now the driver is not working with us. It's been two years. First of January, two years ago, I said I'm sorry and gave him a notice also in December itself and told him as if please look for some other place, blessed him, gave him recommendations, he got the job, he's happy. Okay. Anytime I really need help, I call him. I call him on his granddaughter's birthday, I call him on his birthday. I remember one of his, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, that is the daughter's birthday. I don't remember Kiran's birthday. I don't remember what was his, his son is Yash. I don't remember his birthday. I don't know his wife's name only. Okay, till today. For so many years, he worked with me. I don't even know the wife's name. I never met her. But she's there. Okay, and it doesn't matter because he was very private about it. So I asked around and he said that, ma'am, you know, an Ola or a taxi or a, a Uber taxi driver can earn up to even 45,000 per month. I said, what are you saying? He's saying 15 to 20,000 is easy. I said, then why aren't people, you know, leaving the private jobs? He's saying it's, it's a little hard out there. The effort is there. You know? In the private job, there is a lot of thing holiday. I was like, wow, so aren't you willing to? He said, I'm trying to tell my son to go for it. I said, is he interested? He's saying, no, he's already studied and he's done pretty well. He wants to join a call center. I spoke to Yash and he said, yes, I want to join a call center. I'm good with my English and I'm going to become a manager eventually. And, you know, my dad will, when he retire, then he can sit at home like my mom and they can look after my children. They can look after my sister's children. And uh, I'm going to take care of the family. So when you actually do something, I asked Ramesh Ji, I said, Aap ghar pe bed paenge. He said, jab time aega. The fact is, when you are busy with work, you have very little to no time for grief. You have no time to start playing games. And when you're working, and whoever, even your customer offers you a little praise and says, thank you. You did a good job. I'll be very honest with you. Please, my uncle is living in Gibraltar. My own mama, my sagga mama, my, my, my mother's real brother, younger one, younger to my mother by um, 12 years. Okay. He was the one who, there was a time in between, you know, he was in trouble. And, uh, he had problem with his business. There was expansion. The roads were made. And overnight, the government came and they said, we give you 24 hours notice. Just shut down your shop. Empty it. We are breaking it. He said, but what about my work? We'll give you, you know, the ba basic minimum compensation. And after being a British citizen also, he did not get enough. And he was in tears. The shop that he had nurtured, he was doing so well. Overnight, it shut down. And then obviously, he came to me. I'm way younger than him. And he said, Romy, what should I do? And I call him Papi Bhaiya. Okay, so I told Papi Bhaiya. I said, Papi Bhaiya, you please do what you enjoy doing. He said, what? I can't. I said, you anyway didn't enjoy running a shop. She said, you're right. I said, now it's been taken away. Feel happy. Okay, you got some compensation. But now you can rest at home and you can, he said, but resting is not going to be an option. I have to look after my family here. I said, yeah, I understand. He said, what should I do? I said, you love cooking. He said, yes, but then who's going to pay me for cooking? I said, be a chef. He said, but I'm not a trained chef. I said, you have got so many friends. You've been in Gibraltar since you were 17 years old. It's such a small city. Please do your research on Gibraltar, all of you guys. It's such a small city. I've been there. I said, every Tom, Dick and Harry, Joe, Larry Moore knows you. I said, why don't you? I said, and you're a night owl. You like to work in the night. You like to get up late. You're a lazy, you know, typical, like my son type of a, you know, teen. You're not grown up. <laughs> you know? I said, one, become a professional, that player, snooker player. He said, I'm not that good. 
and I don't have so much, you know, money and all that to practice. I said, okay, fine. Why don't you join the club? Then he thought about it. I said, what about that casino where you took us? No, that closed at that on a Saturday, something and all that. Finally, after a month, I get a call and he tells me that I have joined the club. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm a chef over there. I said, really? How does it work? He said, every evening I go set my menu. I do the shopping, you know, in the afternoon. The vendors come, they give me all kinds of chicken and all kinds of, you know, the meats and everything. I do all the preparation. I start cooking. The menu is fixed. And then we are kind of, you know, sending out the messages. At that time, the WhatsApp, the smartphones were not there. They used to send out messages. They used to be, you know, kind of a small little article in their local newspaper that this is the menu for the day. And the people who liked it, they used to come sometimes just to eat his food. He actually started making so many pounds. Then after two years, he brought mama, mommy down here for the first time to India. And after so many years, and she was so happy. And he brought, bought a diamond necklace for her for more than five lakhs. One go. He gave one lakh rupees to my mother. He gave me 20,000. He gave my sister 20,000. He, he gave five, 5,000 to the kids. I don't know how much money he gifted. And we were all like, oh my God, this guy. And then after five, six years, there, there was a fire because this guy was completely into disaster, asking for disaster. There was a fire in that place and there was some mistake on their side only. There was some fight and all kinds of things happened. So that pub was shut down. And mama was again out of work. Papi Bea was out of work. So again, he called up, now Romy. I said, another pub. He said, no, Romy. This was like really shattering, you know. I really enjoyed it. Every day it was so much fun. I said, were you getting any breaks and all that? He said, look, I took that holiday and I came to India. And at that time, I, you know, got my other family members to come and cook and take care of the menu and everything. But I actually enjoyed doing it. I used to look forward to it on a daily basis. And now I'm heartbroken. What do I do? I said, Mama, when I was there and Gibraltar being with its undulated, uh, this thing, you were very good at driving. He said, yes. I said, become a driver. He said, shall I join Uber? I said, go ahead. He said, but then what will people in India say? I said, who's bothered about you in India? Who really cares? You don't have to tell anyone anything. And you'd be so surprised. I met a set of people at, you know, I took my dad for his uh, heart checkup and everything. Just as a cursory thing, he was going through it. And... Uh, I was talking to the people around. There was a lot of waiting and all that. The doctors called out for an emergency and he came back after one and a half hours. And we all were very quiet about it because, you know, it's a heart emergency. There was someone who actually went through a very massive heart attack and he had to be saved. And the doctor was very senior and he was, he, he was doing his job. Okay, so we all were waiting. So we all started chatting with each other. And then I found another couple. I heard them talking in Sindhi. And I kind of, you know, asked them, I said, are you all from Hong Kong? And they said, no, no, no. I said, where? So they said, Gibraltar. I said, Gibraltar, even my mama is there. He said, who? I said, I'm talking about uh, Mahesh Metani. I said, Ari, your Mahesh is like niece. Oh my God, I can't believe it. One, you don't look as if you're Mahesh's niece. Is Mahesh really so many years older? He's such a kid. I said, I know he looks like my younger brother. And then, you know, they were a little embarrassed in telling me. I said, I know he's, a, he's working as an Uber driver. They said he's a very hardworking, a very sweet guy. So whatever it is, the reason why I spent so much time in talking about this is because this is a very important part of your personality. If you really want to, to enhance your personality, start doing everything properly. Work is very important. And once you've got your act together, where the work is concerned, then loving your customers, loving your family, your importance in your family goes up. Men and women, 
who are sitting at home and just taking care of only the household activities unless they are super good with what they do they really even their own children and their husbands at the end of 40 50 years of their marriage you know there is just a big drama that oh you done so much and all that at the end of it inside they feel what did you achieve the same daughters the same sons who are working they land up coming to me and telling me that they don't have respect for their mothers or they don't have respect for fathers who are not working so whatever it is start getting down to work and be good at it conscientiousness okay it's part of self management in emotional intelligence please start working when you are busy with your work a lot of people want your company you want work your work to happen go to a busy person don't go to a person who just keeps yapping and talking and talking and talking i'm so tempted to give you examples from my personal life but then you know i just gave you the example of papi bhaiya and it took me so long but i had to tell you this there is no work on this earth another client of mine and i'm not going to mention his name because he's a complete jal kukri right now i'm not even talking to him a very beautiful person very very loving person i learned so much from him but right now this guy doesn't want to talk to me because i i was so fed up of him being without work for 6 years and during that time he got married also his wife gave up on him she used to call me and she used to say did he do something about him and i said what can i do i'm a counselor i'm a psychologist she said please can you come out of that role and just scold him i could not i cannot face i cannot i cannot get out of my counselor's role and i'm not i understand how the games people play and you won't believe it after so much of careful tolerating that guy's energy and everything he ultimately converted me into this whole triangle of the rescuer perpetuator and the victim game from the res- he made me a rescuer and i told him i said i'm not interested in rescuing you this is your life and i gave him my mama's example he was also good at driving this fellow was like nahi it is beneath me it is beneath me i said join a call center no one will come to know you can say you are doing the it work over there you don't have to reveal anyone's salary but at least you will come back with a few thousand rupees no i was earning 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees and then he get got into becoming a perpetuator after getting out of the victim role he became a perpetuator and started shouting at me and saying you were jealous of me when i told you that i am getting a salary of 1 and 1/2 lakhs you said iski aukat nahi hai i said i would never say that for anyone ever and he started shouting yelling made me into a victim and very gently i got up and i said look i really love you i did the whole phone phone exercise and told him i said i love you but you know can you just carry on i will have to draw a line so i got out of the loop of you know the rescuer the perpetuator he tried to make me and i i actually you know cried tears of blood became a victim got involved okay unnecessarily got caught up in that whirlpool that takes you down the downward spiral okay so please watch out if experts like me and aware people like me and i'm not saying it out of sheer uh, you know that egotism that oh if it can happen to me no not like that <laughs> please understand i'm i'm saying it in a very very humble and you know sweet way when i started with the fact that wonderful person i i really miss him at times i miss his wife like anything and i don't seem to be cutting eyes because those conditioning operant conditioning and classical conditioning conditioning that you know the subconscious the parents have put ye kaam neecha hai ye kaam uncha hai 
घर पे बैठो अपनी इज्जत को संभालो इज्जत इज इन सेवा इज्जत इज इन वर्किंग इज्जत इज इन लविंग इज्जत इज नॉट गेटिंग इन कॉट अप विथ अल्टीरियर ट्रांजेक्शन विथ हिडन मोटिव games people play as a book became so popular because people resonated and yet it is so easy to get caught up in the downward spiral even if you go upward is it going upward or is it going down we don't know when you get caught up in a spiral that's where the problem happens what you need to do is just be and then radiate be like the sun but not the sun which is at 12 o'clock you know which becomes too hot in certain seasons be the sun from a distance far away and sometimes at a different angle so that it looks very pretty orange and cute and all that mahesh behave yourself with your okay just because my mama's name is mahesh doesn't mean that i allow you to put annotations over there okay so on that note be loving intimacy work activity work on your time and i should be using this slide now in time management also so that even if there is a little you know overlapping doesn't matter okay for the next 10 minutes i'm going to explain about johari window and we'll take a short break and we'll come back and we'll do nlp how's that okay so quickly are you with me all did you enjoy so far even the the examples were a little long did you gain a little insight as to how you should look at work with a lot of joy become so good with your work and enjoy it initially if you are left alone to do it have so much fun put it on instagram have give so much energy that even if you clean a public toilet you should have so much fun doing it that the rest of the world will leave their job remember that one which i showed you every take the responsibility of one man that adidas one with a basketball player with arms and legs enjoy toilet cleaning public toilet cleaning to such an extent and make it so that everyone says that you are toilet cleaning karo to romitajes and i mean it i have done it guys and once you're very very miserable if you're very miserable in your life the best way to come out of your misery is take up all your cleaning agents take up all this put nice you know cover and i have actually had to clean the public toilets in slums in patel nagar where that emerson building is right now in uh, shivaji nagar you know that station behind the station what is that place called uh, with w it is called okay those three lanes where i went those three lanes have been taken care they've gone away and that emerson building has come patel nagar has shrunk there's still millions of business happening from that remaining patel nagar but emerson is still there and it's a matter of time i'm blessing those people of patel nagar they will move out they will have another building and let them do whatever business they want to do from some other place but that place will become very pretty and that whole area will become like you know the value will go up they'll get a good view of the coep building and the whole works near that sancheti nabad you know that area over there emerson that building is there i had to do it without gloves without any mask nothing and this was years ago and what did i get out of it such a good life and it doesn't matter if i inspired or if i didn't okay the fact is that there was a shift and that is important now let's look at johari window there are n number of beautiful videos out there okay i will send it to you and you all please go through it and the explanations are very cute but i just feel that i enjoy talking about johari window a lot so i'm going to do it on my own and i'm not going to show you a video so what is this johari window as you can see over here it's again a matrix okay and it is again right over here 
right over here is a section which is known by self so here and here this first and the third is known by self okay and no sorry first is known by self okay here and this is known by the others so the first quadrangle is that part of your system which you know about yourself and others also know about you so this is something which is an open area it is a public area and it's called the arena okay so it's open for all everyone knows what you are what your face looks like what your name is okay and uh, there are so many things about you that you're studying in wadia college you got lovely parents and you know you got a um, you got your own bike and uh, you're an intelligent person you're a loving person so so many aspects about you which your friends know your family knows your relatives know and that's supposed to be the arena or the open area of your life okay <coughs> then comes a portion which is known by others the second quadrangle but you don't know so that is your blind spot okay there are certain aspects about you certain tics that you have certain ways you talk certain mistakes you make certain um you know that you're just blind to it you just feel that you are helping other people but you may be messing up with their lives okay you may be the perpetrator you may be the playing the victim's role you may be the yes but you may be you know what people will think type of game so like that there are many blind spots about you okay right so they are unknown to self and they are known by the others then comes the third one where there is a lot of things you know about yourself there is a lot of you know hidden agenda in your system you know what's going on you know what you like you know what you dislike but you have to pretend to and you hide it in your system okay you don't want others to know that you are afraid of lizards because you are a boy you don't want others to know that you are afraid of spiders because you are a boy or you are a girl okay you can't be afraid of even uh, flying you don't want others to know about it so you just say mehanga hai okay and you pretend and you move around life in trains and in buses but you refuse to take planes you are afraid of leaving your family but you don't want to share it with other people you just blame your parents they don't want me to go out to the hostel they don't want me to leave pune and work anywhere else i would love to go okay so this is a facade that you put you avoid these situations you don't want to go there you don't want to talk about it you want to cover it these are things which you want to put in the back shelf you want to put it in the safe inside your safe and only you know the combination of this safe and you need your eye scanner you need your you know thumb scanner you need your uh, you know voice activation thing everything in order to open that that inner safe that hidden thing okay and yet there is the last quadrangle which no one knows about you and even you don't know about yourself that is the unknown that is a big big part of your subconscious it is so hidden that even you don't know and there could be some talent there could be some you know some beautiful aspects about you but just because you have not you know dug deep inside you you have not been able to take it forward so how do we decrease this part the whole life according to joseph loft and harry ingram and that's how the name joe harry okay joe harry comes from this itself okay so joe harry joseph loft and harry ingram these were the two people who came up with it and they said your entire life everyone is working towards decreasing this unknown so how do you do it okay how do we do it you start getting into you know expressing and giving sharing with people okay and that's why you just increase this so a lot of things that are hidden about you 
you go and you start sharing with people you tell them about what is going on in your mind you tell them about things that people don't know about you and then here this aspect you just shift this window here where you start seeking feedback tell me about me something that you like tell me what are my talents tell me what is it that irritates you about me is this something that you're putting up and you're not talking to me and telling me because i'm your friend because i'm your partner because you love me so much so if you really really truly love me please share with me okay and you do that and when you do that what happens is in this whole process of this window shifting and this window shifting there is this patch of blind thing that come out and you discover some hidden talent in yourself i'll give you a real life story of lady moses lady moses was and there is a same example in india in uh, bihar there was a lady called putli bai same age somehow just like that consciousness that i told you about um, the pigmalion effect and the galatia effect the same story was happened in india in the same context and these are real life stories i have actually heard about both of them okay so lady moses was in a dutch of a dutch descent and putli bai was in from bihar she was you know where that met painting happens she used to do that so what happened was okay what happened was that uh, once on the 75th birthday of lady moses and putli bai her grandchildren went and they brought lots of painting and a canvas now lady moses was very fond of cooking she had a huge wok okay and in that wok she used to continuously cook and she would come up with such dishes whatever was the ingredients she would just be so creative she would just cook something and you know make and the family were like you know she's never out of the kitchen her life is around the kitchen there was a small chair also inside the kitchen so when she used to finish you know preparation of the food she used to keep looking out she sit on that chair and look outside and outside that kitchen were beautiful plants and you know beautiful trees and she would keep staring out and there would be some there was some mountain in the farmhouse kind of thing and it was a huge house and she was perpetually in the kitchen working all alone all day chopping cleaning everything and doing everything inside so on her 75th birthday the grandkids and everyone got together and they gave her a canvas to paint upon and she said look i am into cooking i don't know anything about painting in putli bai's case she used to do painting for the house she used to make those rangoli and she used to make those mithila paintings outside and then after a month or two or three or another you know like festivity any any family uh, get together outside in that village putli bai ji was called and asked to do that mithila painting mithili painting or whatever it's called okay the the bihari one anyone please help me about what it is okay and uh, i could show it to you so lady moses was like you know completely shocked she said but i have never touched a paint brush i do how to paint i don't know what it is and i have not and there was no youtube and all that i'm talking about yesterday years huh? both of them have passed away long time ago so these grandchildren were like no you just do something so after till a month this soul painting thing was just lying around there one day she was inspired she said okay let me open it and she just took it out and she just kind of you know started putting some water and you know whatever it was and she started you know sketching on that canvas and she started painting and what did she paint the view that she saw outside okay and it just turned out to be a beautiful painting so everybody liked it so they took that canvas out and they got it framed and they put it in the drawing room a couple of months later some of the friends of the grandchildren came to the house and they said what a beautiful painting you know can i please buy it 
and uh, the lady moses was like buy it are you kidding me please carry on take it it's my gift they said no 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 gift we'll buy it from you and they gave her a substantial amount of money and now she got excited and she said is it really that good and everyone said yes it is very beautiful so she said get me another canvas so another canvas came she made a similar painting and then another then another and she became one of the most popular you know painters over there and she found out this unknown people did not know about her talent she didn't know about it and this unknown opened because she took a chance okay so this blind spot was shifted the facade you know this was shifted and everyone came to know that lady moses had the talent for not only being creative but being super professionally creative and then her catering business also did very well she started training people for food and she started training people for paintings and drawings also and she did it for free but she became a legend okay so all this happens when we have a mutual trust trust and sense of awareness when you trust your friends to open that part of you which is you know hidden which you don't want to share which is in the recesses of your safe and you want to keep it safely there these are your kind of worms okay and you just are happy with it you don't want to share it and then there is something about you which is your blind spot where you are afraid to ask for feedback so how do you go about it you ask for feedback and you expose yourself and then this unknown becomes very small and your personality blooms to be bigger than what you are okay and that is called shared discovery where other people's observation comes to you and self discovery happens of all that put together this my guys you can only do it when you ask for feedback and when you tell okay trust the others and tell them what is going on in your system this is it okay this is how you start seeking feedback and this is how you start giving feedback okay so how do you go about it you there is this whole thing about you know seeking and giving feedback whatever it is do not attack the other person okay it allows for growth there is so much that is to it please go through these i can share this the most important thing is receive it as a gift and give it as a gift also wrap it up in such a beautiful way that no one feels hurt when they are receiving a feedback from you clothe it in beauty tell this person what do you think okay do you feel this way about yourself okay this has been my observation but i could be wrong but this is what i have felt this is my feeling and let that person you know insulate it with a lot of love and when people give it to you even if they give it to you directly receive it as a gift go home cry about it keep it or discard it reject it trash it up give it to someone else do what you do want to do but receive it as a gift don't throw it back to the other person and say i don't want your gift okay keep your opinions to yourself i didn't ask for it please ask for opinions please ask so this sit this feedback okay so give yourself feedback do not attack the person just you know ask yourself all these things and okay we'll talk about assertiveness and we'll talk about nlp after a 5 minute break and i'm going to rush on it okay so please go for a quick break any questions on johari and feedback Thank uh you. -huh. 
Okay, so welcome back. I quickly, you know, I know it's still one minute to go for your break, but those who are still here, just give me a yes, 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 and let's continue with and quickly with assertiveness. So assertiveness is just a part, which is a very small, you know, which is like a thing about it. It was there in this communication workshop, so I just put it here. Is that you got to learn to be a little assertive in your life otherwise you're going to be crushed into pieces by other people who want to occupy more space because of their sheer size and you know their width and girth and all that of not just literally here there's a picture like that but it actually you know i'm talking about the fact that there are some people who are larger than life they're too big they got so much to give i mean a personality like me had this problem with my own mother my mother was too big, yeah. She was not leaving the center stage. My sister veered out of it and got married and went to Vishakha Patnam. 
but i could not cut ice with you know people around her everyone was like you know renu aunty this renu aunty that nobody would look at me even young guys would come and they would be like you know renu aunty aap itna acha ye aap itna acha khana banate hain they should tell me i make better and they should look at me and say inno nahi sikhaya and there were certain things that she had not taught me and she said kuch nahi sikhaya inhone samjha rehne dijiye aap ye apne aap mein hi paripurn hai and i literally had to beg my mother i said can you please stop occupying the stage can i come over and she said no create your own okay so i realized that i had to create my own because my mom was not willing to leave the center stage till the end okay and yet she chose me to pass away i she went in my arms i was holding her like this and she went in my arms and i have now become like harry potter okay before her going away i had not seen anyone passing away in front of my eyes even suresh sir did not go in front of me he went in front of divyansh we could not hold him he even didn't go in our arms okay but i was there i was moved out and then divyansh went in and uh, then he went i didn't get to you know but my mom she went in my arms okay so you have to create your own chair you don't fight for someone else's position okay you will find that going to people are going to crush you towards you find your own chair you find your own assertiveness wherever you go whether the airport the train the bus you know any public place in your own home on the own dining table create your own chair okay and let that be your chair and create such an aura around your chair there is someone wants to sit on your chair they seek your permission can i sit on your chair till today when my son is working on my computer it's a laptop he can take it somewhere else he sometimes does that he picks it up and he takes it to his room and i tell him why am i sitting on my chair he says no it's your chair and i'm like it's okay i don't want to give him the feeling that you can sit on my chair i used to seek permission of suresh sir before sitting on his chair so make your own chair okay it means taking charge of your life setting your goals making choices okay it also means respecting and valuing the other person's choices the other person's goals the other person's needs and at the same time it also means that while you are taking care of other people's needs and their space you still value your own needs and your space and you draw a line a thin line rekha and do not cross those boundaries which are invisible okay it does not mean winning at another person's you know expense it means to positively and tactfully कभी युक्ति से कभी भक्ति से कभी शक्ति से और कभी जब शक्ति नहीं लगती है तो युक्ति लगाओ और कभी वो भी नहीं होता है तो भक्ति लगाओ कभी भक्ति से स्टार्ट करो फिर युक्ति लगाओ अगर तब भी काम नहीं होता है तो शक्ति लगाओ तब आपको मिलती है आई वॉन्ट एन आंसर तब आपको मिलती है Come on, there are many answers. I want it typed over here. Are you typing? Is it stuck over here? Is anyone typing? Success, nahi. Hindi me bolo. When you are into yukti, when you allow yukti, shuk shanti, shanti is the one. Okay. आपको तब मिलती है शांति, तब आपको मिलती है. There's one more girl. मुक्ति सफा यस आपको मुक्ति मिलती है देन ओनली यू गेट द फ्रीडम टू डू वॉट यू वॉन्ट ओके सुख तो फिर लड़का हो जाता है ना हमको सिर्फ लड़कियां चाहिए अभी राइट नाउ वी आर इन टू फेमिनिज्म ओके शक्ति युक्ति भक्ति एंड देन यू गेट शांति देन यू गेट मुक्ति ओके वट एल्स डू यू गेट 
there was one organization where they came up with so many others you know and right now i'm forgetting okay uh, just think about it and then type it out and later tell me okay so positively tactfully and strongly with goodwill and with self confidence you be assertive be happy okay be like this kid who is willing to you know be cute and still is giving you in sindhi what we call a moira and now we talk quickly about injunctions and drivers okay the injunctions and drivers are such that there are certain scripts in our life that are introduced by certain parent like figures because they have those scripts and they are still being able to manage their life with it and they put it for you just because you are a girl they tell you don't exist don't be don't be who you are don't be a child grow up okay and yet others say don't grow up okay they want you to be like child like one of the reasons why probably my mama mahesh mama is still a in his child like you know and his child ego state is still very big is because he was the youngest in my own family my chacha's daughter she is the youngest in our entire sakrani family we are still not willing to get her married the family i am but she is not and she is 42 years old okay people still think that she is a child and she is not ready for marriage i am like yeah, what? what okay and yet you will find that there are some people who are like you know don't be a child they just grow up overnight okay don't do anything sit at home be lazy like i am okay don't make it in your life don't be successful and trust me these things come from parent like figures even if they don't realize it don't be important don't belong don't be close don't come close to me don't be intimate okay don't work don't be well or don't be mentally sane don't think don't feel in golmal there's a joke na ab tum sochne bhi lagi ho kalandi ab tum sochne bhi lagi ho you know so the whole injunction is these are the six drivers which says be perfect in your life okay they also say that you know be there for others work hard be strong take care of your time and be careful with the way things work okay so there's a lot about injunctions and drivers and there's so much about redefining and discounting so when it comes to redefining it's your choice you just become aware of what's happening which are the injunctions that are working against you and which are not working against you and then you use what is called an nlp technique of swish where you change it change your perspective a full 180 degree turn and you can remove the programming you can remove the conditioning you can remove the force field around you and recreate in a very safe environment you can recreate a nice force field after you have changed that programming inside your system and that will lead you to becoming a very very successful person in your own eyes okay and this is what i would like to say enjoy communicating have a nice day that's about it okay so on that note i start with nlp okay so this i had done last year on uh, oh my god even last year i had done nlp on the 11th of jan but at 2 pm 2022 today is also 11th of jan and we are doing nlp okay so on that note let me just take it into put it into a big screen i love the screen so i and it's a picture so i couldn't change it okay so what is basically nlp the word nlp the full form is neuro linguistic programming okay and nlp begins by accepting and respecting what is right now what is and what has been it honors you as you are but nlp also insists that what you desire is possible if it is possible for anyone on this planet earth 
it is possible for you. So now let's see how this whole thing works. I'm going to repeat it and I'm going to tell you to take a screenshot of it. This is a very beautiful picture that I got of a definition of NLP and what NLP is and I'm very proud of it. I've been looking for videos on NLP since many days and I didn't even find, you know, there was some people who have done a lot of work, but I found them pretty boring and monotonous and I, I kind of, you know, use it as a lullaby to go to sleep. Okay. So if you feel like going through them and you enjoying what they've been saying, fine, go ahead. But then a lot of videos have been made now by Richard Bander himself. Okay. The one of the co-founders of NLP. Okay. So NLP begins by accepting and respecting what is and what has been. It honors you as you are. It respects you, loves you, accepts you as you are. But NLP also insists that what you desire is possible. Goal setting, if you do it with the help of NLP techniques, all that we've talked about till today, if you use the NLP techniques, you'll find that whatever you desire, you will get. If it is possible for anyone else, it is possible for you. Okay. And I go one step ahead and I say, make it possible for you so that you can set the precedence and then let others follow your you know, stance and let them let the others look at what you are and how you take it forward okay so now let's look at again what it is and who are the founders and how they went about it so nlp began in the in the 70s as an in-depth understanding of how language works in human personality and how our language in a variety of modes creates our human programs for thinking, feeling, speaking, behaving, and relating. So John Grinder was a linguistic professor and Richard Bandler was a graduate student of mathematics and computers. And these were the people that is Ron, uh, you know, Richard Bandler right now, this is one of his old photographs. He was a person who used to put black nail polish. He had, you know, those uh, beads coming out of his hair. He had piercing in his ears, okay, and used to wear these leather jackets and used to, you know, come in all sleazy clothes and look at his attitude. Oh my God, the guy was quite a cool dude. And he used to sit on a high chair with a mic attached to his thing and he would yell and scream and make people just get up and dance and then talk about the tricks. And John Grinder, on the other hand, was a very serious, you know, very sober, very delicate guy. Soon their styles, you know, initially matched and they came up with this whole thing and they're still the owners of NLP. And yet there are millions of people out there who have become neo NLP, you know, researchers and they've come up with their own techniques. So these people, they just picked up three people and they followed them, they observed them, they took their permission and they sat through and recorded their programs and they interviewed even their clients to find out that why is it that there are some psychologists, some counselors who do not, who are not able to give you appointments. And when they do, within a few sessions, they change your personality without doing anything because a counselor, psychologist doesn't change, you change yourself when, because they create an environment. Remember Carl Rogers? I now create an environment where people bring out the best within themselves. Okay. So he looked at them. These people looked at them and they saw that how the behaviors were impacted and how things were changed. So these are the two people. And these are the three people, Milton Erickson, Virginia Satter and Fritz Perez. Okay. I somehow only remember Milton Erickson's name. These two others, I don't have, I've not done too much research about it, but I can just tell you that a lot of stuff that has come from uh, these three, these two boys is because of these three people. These are the three psychologists, very successful. And these were also the psychiatrists and shrinks and the whole works. And uh, they have written so many papers and they have, really provided a lot, okay? The system was developed in answer to the why particular set, psychotherapists were so effective with their patients, 
and here they are calling them patients not clients so these were basically not only just uh, you know psychotherapists but they were also psychiatrist so psychotherapist could be very good in psychology and has done the masters and you know certain specialized courses but may not be holding uh, or maybe holding the phd but in social sciences okay there is a psychiatrist is a person who has basically done mbbs and an md and is basically practicing where the medicine aspect of psychology is concerned a psychotherapist a psychologist cannot give medicines i cannot give you medicines even if i know them even if i know about them i may be like a compounder okay i may give it to you under the table but i cannot prescribe and give it to you that is unethical okay can i go to the court and say that yes this is a problem with you and that is it okay if i am subpoenaed then i can go to court and talk so can the psychiatrist but psychiatrist can also give you medicines and their statements will be over you know will be overriding the statements made by ordinary psychologists that like me so these people were so senior and rather than explore this question in terms of psychotherapeutic theory and practice bandler and grinder sought to analyze what the therapists were doing at an observational level categorize it and apply the categories as a general model of interpersonal influence so nlp nlp seeks to instruct people to observe to make inferences and to respond to others as the the three original very effective therapists and this was told by druckman in 1988 okay so they usually use nlp as a technology and they say that just as science you know in science it says that at 100 degrees the water is going to now attain a state where it is going to be having getting it will need some more latent heat and then it will come into a state of boiling and after that latent heat becomes a little more in a few seconds and depending on the amount of heat that is coming from whichever source okay the water then starts getting converted into steam are you getting it so when that is how specific it is but depending on the temperature depending on the pressure and depending on the vessel the amount of time it takes and depending on the amount of heat but the thing is it is 100 degrees after 100 degrees the water then starts getting converted into steam so just like technology the it is true for you it is true for somebody else if the variables are are the same then what works for you will what work for the other person if you as a good person is thrown from the fifth floor you are going to injure some part of your body depending on which angle we've been thrown similarly another person who is a bad person is thrown from the same place will also get the same injury just because you are good god will not save you <laughs> okay there are other aspects you know you can discuss on it and get into so this is what it is okay and similar to engineering in what it tries to answer what works rather than what is true okay and there are very few exceptions to the rule ultimately its its ideal end products are systemized model and usable approaches rather than beliefs or facts okay so they don't talk about truth and neuro linguistic programming has got three words in it and words according to john grinder is so important why is it important you know according to him what he says let me read it out is words while totally powerless to affect change in the external reality have almost complete power to create alter change destroy and invent the internal reality this is the power of words okay so shad helmster also talked about these electrical impulses that go on in our brain system and a lot of work has been done on brain a lot have of it has been taken from this whole concept of computer programming 
a lot of people have started using language as a tool to heal okay so neuro means the brain linguistics means the language and the programming means how and the technical part of it okay where you can change the program there may be a bug in your system okay you can change that bug okay so neuro refers to our nervous system and recognizes that communication is so much more than words when we give or receive information our neurology and our physiology that is the mind and the body system is affected okay we represent reality on the screen of our mind the way we perceive things and the way we internalize it we have our own filters we have our own rose tinted glasses or not okay we may have black tinted glasses so the way the information goes through our five senses and the way it is processed based on our previous programming if we are happy with it fine continue if you are unhappy with it go dig deep down and find out those bugs and take them out eliminate them and replace them with some positive affirmation so that those bugs the tendency of the human mind is such that those bugs can be replaced by bigger bugs then what will you do okay do not get infected because love is very infectious and so are the other distortions of love which is hatred which is jealousy which is envy okay which is lust and a lot more okay so keeping that in mind let us understand what is said about linguistic it refers to the way that words create meanings when they are used to communicate humans are meaning making machines and are eager to make sense of any communication unless you do not understand it it's not going to get into your system unless and until you don't want it you can filter it and it may not even touch your consciousness forget about your pre consciousness you may not even have heard ab sune ko ansuna kar dete hain okay so humans are meaning making machines and are eager to make sense of any communication in the urgency to make meaning from events or communication sometimes this empowering conclusions are drawn okay here it's written often i use the word sometimes because that's how i would like to see it Okay. and programming in first to that we can take control of this process and run it more effectively just like computer software with nlp if something is not working for you it is possible to reprogram your neurology and your physiology to behave in a way different and more empowering are you getting it so this is what nlp is nlp is you know completely subjective there is what is called maps and they say that maps are not the territory but if you make some changes in the maps there is some relation to the territory and the territory might undergo some changes okay or it could be the other way around you change make some changes in the territory around you and automatically the gps you know the google will pick it up and then they will be able to make the changes in the map okay so okay there are micro models and there are meta models there are some shoots have must that nlp talks about and we should because those meta models are the ones that have been taking care of us those macro and micro models are the ones that have been taking care of us so far and you have it in you you have the capacity in you is that it interacts and it learns and it feels then there is this whole thing about the visual the auditory and the kinesthetic because other than the five senses from the 
five senses, sorry. The most important sense is the visual. Most of the people in the world are visual. 70% of the world, yet a lot of them, 20% are even, you know, auditory. A lot of people are kinesthetic. They're the very touchy-feely type, okay? And very few are completely gustatory and, uh, but it's just, you know, exceptional cases. So in these ways, are the ways we take it in. And this is about the level. Most important thing to know is that NLP helps in the sphere. Okay. And the traditional way of teaching, the traditional way of living your life according to the people, the parent like figures around you, has blocked your true self awareness. Because they sometimes they themselves are quite blocked in the ways. And we are going to today itself talk about, you know, how you can be right-handed, left-handed, and you have all the resources within you. But now let's look at some of the presuppositions of NLP. Okay. And there are plenty. Every model of the world. You have to respect your own model and you have to respect the people, other people's model. Okay. Map is not the territory. Map is just a representation. But some changes in the map and some changes in the territory can make changes. In There's a lot of stuff happening in their cognitive, a lot of stuff happening in their affective world. What you see is just the creative aspect. Okay. So people are way deeper. The subconscious mind is way deeper. The blind spot and the hidden spot is a lot. Okay. The black hole is really huge. Okay, so there is no failure. It's only feedback. There is a, one of my seniors, uh, Mr. Alok Mubai, also been my colleague in several firms and with us also he worked and he made a statement long time ago. I'm talking about yesteryears. In my first job, Uptron Academy of Computer Learning, where he told me that there, Romika, there is no such thing as failure. Failure is someone else's opinion on how a particular thing should be done. Once there is no particular way of doing something, the question of failure does not arise. Are you guys with me? It's only a feedback that how you could have done it differently and how, you know, something that is failed. Velcro is an example. Posted slips are an example. How posted slips, the greatest invention of posted slips and Velcro was made because it was actually a failure. Okay. And these are the things that you're going to learn in marketing. But then, you know, it's also, there's another story of the uh, pot, which is, you know, the defective, the, the crack pot. How many of you have heard the story of the crack pot? Anyone? Have you? How many of you heard this? Are you awake? Energized? Alive? Class? Good morning. It's not yet 10:30. We've got another five, ten minutes to go. Okay. So quickly, if you haven't heard about it, look for it. The story of the crack pot on, and as a homework, just put it. You know, a very nice link. Not everyone. Two, three of you do it, and obviously you are going to be my stars, and you're going to be outstanding. Okay. So there are no unresourceful people, only unresourceful states of beingness, okay, or states of mind. The meaning of communication is the response you get. Everyone can be taught to do anything. I'm sorry, my internet is showing a little instability here and there. So be with me. And this is what the whole thing is, okay? And uh, this is how the whole thing works. Okay. There is an internal representation over here. There's a state of beingness and you have a physiology. And that in turn leads to a certain behavior and it gives you results. Okay. But what happens? How do the results come? Okay. 
there are some external events, some stimuli that goes in, there are some filters in your system which delete, distort, and generalize. Meta programs, values, and beliefs, and attitudes. And all that leads to an inter internal representation as when you get results, which makes you to be what you are. And there is 2 billion bits of information coming to your system per second. You're not even aware of the kind of bombardment your system is going through every day. Two billions per second. It's crazy. I can't even think about it. I feel it's a lie. Okay. So external events, the same thing. You distort, you generalize, you delete based on the time and space, the language, memory, traits, decisions, attitudes, values, and beliefs. There's an internal representation, a state of mind, and a physiology, which in turn leads to the behavior. And that's what you think you are. Then there is this whole thing about applications okay, of NLP. And these are as follows. Okay? On a day-to-day -day life, we evolve. We build rapport with people. You know? We believe, we make new, new beliefs and rapport building and modeling, mentoring, coaching skills, they all come out of NLP methods. NLP is a way where you develop your consultancy and your facilitation, you develop your motivation, you develop accountability to what you are and you take ownership of your experience and you take it forward. And then let's look at sensory equity, which is part of NLP. This is the time, okay, this is a little bit of a story as a break. So if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go for a picnic. Happen get married. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the most funny part of it. Okay. And if you want happiness for a year, inherit wealth. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, learn to love what you do. And that is the important aspect. And that's what neuro-linguistic programming is all about. The neuro, the linguistic, and the programming. Okay. So we receive information through our and the gustatory. Okay. And how we change it, how we choose it, how we delete it, how we distract, you know, distort everything. Our reality is dependent on the belief system, on the programming, which has come from families, from society and the environment we live in. Okay. So the whole thing is, it's a very self-determining, self-regulating, self-integrating, self-balancing process. Okay. So these are the three more important ways. And it's called the VAC, the visual, the auditory and the kinesthetic. And there's a lot of detail and a lot of stuff on the visual, the auditory, and the kinesthetic. The way you learn also is visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. One example I'll tell you. Probably I'm a kinesthetic way of, I have a kinesthetic way of learning, okay? The doing things. That has really made a lot of difference. So the way I learned my 10th, 12th, the way I learned and appeared for my exam is that I used to write. I used to write. And I used to visualize, okay? I used to imagine the battles of Panipat. I used to remember the dates. I used to visualize and I used to put labels, mental labels. And day after tomorrow, I'm going to do that only. I'm going to be talking about how you remember and please remember this back, okay? So on that note, let me just say, and my sister, on the other hand, she was also very intelligent and she, you know, kind of managed to do a graduation also. And she always got a first class, you know, and she always got more marks than I did. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so jealous of her even now after so many years when she's quit her education at BA. And I'm still continuing. I'm <laughs> not giving up. Okay. So I've gone beyond it. But the fact is that she always got more marks in school and in college. And she even topped in English. Okay. And I thought I took English and BA just because I felt Gadevi kar sakte. If she can do it, even I can do it. Oh my God. No, no, no. I was not calling my sister a donkey. Okay. Not a female donkey. Okay. I love her. Okay. So whatever it is. So she used to use the auditory method. On a funny note, when she used to be reading, she used to be, you know, completely, you know, Akbar ka ye, ma, 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 pa, 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 pa. And my cousin, actually my cousin whom I consider to be my niece, she was born and 
her brother was born in 10 months of this girl being born so when the brother when karan was born samantha was kept in our house for many months and during those days for practically a year she was with us and in front of my sister she learned to take a first step i missed samantha's growing and i did not see her walk but umita did okay so when umita used to be studying for her ba and she used to be going on and on auditory she was an auditory person so she used to like to listen to her own voice okay and today also after being a reader a visual person i thought she was a visual person and realized she's such an auditory person she's gone into auditory books my god i'm just and now she likes auditory books when tv is on she not look at it she'll be in the kitchen the tv is outside in her living room not her you know like not her official drawing room as she can so she's got a huge house so she's got another place you know which is her uh, a spot you know with the dining and a lounges but the madam is in the kitchen but the tv volume should be on she should be mm. able to hear she's an auditory person so that's how people are they are auditory they are visual and they are kinesthetic some people love to touch you okay and there are others who just can't stand it they just ew, they have the proximics you know maintain that arms length remember i talked about it in body language okay so whatever be it you find out what kind of a person are you and what kind of a person is your client you can find out with the way the person shifts their eyes okay when a person most of the time talking looks upward either right side or left side you know this person a visual person if a person is looking sideways this person is an ordinary person auditory person and if a person is looking downward and talking this person is a kinesthetic touchy feely person this person even if physically doesn't touch you because of the uh, of the culture this person is definitely a person who is um, you know very very kinesthetically oriented okay so okay this is how the whole thing works and uh, we can look for it in um and the rapo is built okay oh this is such beautiful material huh? i just love my own slides you know and there's of course an example you know a case study of this uh, person running a showroom where he's selling cars so when he used the nlp techniques there's out from the way people were talking you know as to who was who oh wow the pictures are changing in this okay how nice so the results can be fun and these are the five people you know the ones who are auditory the ones who are visual the ones who are so these are the sub modalities and rapport building is so so important and rapport could be this mirroring matching there's a full uh, you know i need to give time for this then there's a lifeline process and here i'll just this lifeline is like you know your future is in front of you literally with your right arm which goes in front and your left arm goes behind and you fly like a superman okay so when you sit straight where your right arm is above and you get into a comfortable posture okay with your left and your right shoulders and you close your eyes and you keep your hands in this way for 5 to 6 minutes and you create your lifeline you create your past and you clean up and remove all the knots and all the tension from your past and you create your future to be absolutely brilliant and psychedelic in the future so this is an exercise of a lifeline which i make people do but because of paucity of time we are going to take it forward and there's another exercise that i make people do is about the family tree okay so this family tree and how your grandparents are how your great grandparents are your ancestors how they come together and how they produce your parents and how you you know kind of recreate 
in your mind your opinions about your parents your future and the life of your siblings will also make a lot of difference i've done it and my sister has enjoyed the benefits and then there's role modeling okay which i talked about in the phallic stage of um, uh segment freud's like you know stages of development and then there's the anchoring where you program yourself and you reprogram and you associate classical conditioning is where anchoring is all about okay and you mix it with a bit of operant conditioning but classical conditioning is where the anchoring takes place okay so guys these people have picked it up from the traditional psychologists that i've already spoken about and i can tell you more and more and there's so much more there's a swish method there is um, there are so many even goal setting is part of nlp so thank you guys and have a nice day i hope you have enjoyed these are some of the people i have taken these sessions with and i stop my sharing and i ask you so did you enjoy today's lecture did you enjoy uh, the rest of ta and did you enjoy the rest of thank you purvi so much and uh, god bless you thank you all of you with it and i'm very happy that you enjoyed it and uh, there's a lot more i can get into the depths of it and actually help you all okay and yet i have just kind of you know given you some trailers some sample okay picture bahut sari baki hai and i have got so many pictures to show you and so many experience for you, experiences for you to go through but yet i'll just what my purpose is to you know plant these seeds and you nurture it you do your research on it you know go to other teachers come back to me whenever you have more time if you have time if you have the inclination and we will you will find that you will grow to be a huge amazing person with a dynamic personality okay so personality is a dynamic organization of the psychophysical systems within your system if within you which in turn determines your unique existence okay your adjustment rather with the environment so you are unique you are special and at the same time you belong to the people around you and using some of these techniques you can make the most tough situations in your life into being very smooth sailing and convert your pain into fun and you can still have a great time and feel like a success come what may from where you are right now on on that note god bless you all the best okay and take care and see you tomorrow